Hey everyone, uh, just wanted to do another video on the PGM motherboard made by good old IGS. Um, as a lot of you've known, I've done um, a couple of videos on what to buy for these guys. Um, so if you're, if this is the first video that you're looking at from me, um, please have a look at my other videos, uh, especially the two uh, on the buying guide for the PGMs, what to buy and what not to buy. Um, this video is on actual repairing a PGM. Um, if you're quite good at soldering, um, then it's, it's highly likely that you could try to repair one of these. If you're not into soldering at all and have absolutely no skills in that area, please don't try to repair a board. Um, you'll make the board even worse and um, yeah, it, it's, it's just not worth the stress um, or the time that you have to put into it doing the repair. Uh, so yeah, so please note that. Um, I've repaired quite a few of these, uh, not mainly because I had to, um, a lot of them are repaired because I wanted to be able to do it, and um, I like the challenge, and, and, and these are quite challenging. Um, when I got my first board, my first board that I ever got was a Rev 2, I think, a 2 or a 3, and it was just completely, it didn't work, the seller didn't know anything about it, it didn't even really know what it was. Uh, I got it a oh, long time ago, like way, way, not not long after these were actually launched, um, I actually got it, um, and I didn't know what it was, I'd never played it, didn't know anything about it, there wasn't that many games at that time, uh, it's only been in the last five or so years that I've really got really, really serious into collecting for them, um, I've always loved them, always been very interested in them, um, it's hard these days to find new uh, arcade gear that you've never played with or the games you've never played or anything like that and the PGM fits that build very very nicely so this board here that you can see is a Rev 3 um, it has a lot of battery damage um, if you remember from my other videos I recommend that you get a Rev 9 so if you can have a look here you can see that the battery I'll try to get a close up of it um, the battery here is pussed out everywhere and it's removed quite a few tracks um, to the point where this wouldn't run. Um, obviously I cleaned it all off first, plugged it in and you know, nothing ran. Um, now there are mainly three repairs. Um, the first one I nicknamed it the 10K mod. Uh, and the only reason for that is that on the opposite side of here, um, there's a solder point uh, just in here. Uh, and it's right near a resistor that says 10k, so I used to call this the 10k mod. Um, basically, it's from what I know, as I think this is a clock signal line. Um, it goes from that point there that you can see all the way onto the up other side of the board, and you'll see that there's a track just near the dip switches in there. Now, this track goes from here all the way across to these little guys here. It goes underneath and then goes back the other way. Um, but it's the first track that gets eaten. Um, by the battery um, on this board it's 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 a fairly it's a lot thicker than what it used to be uh, on boards after this it becomes really really thin and it's always the first one that gets eaten um, so that's the first repair so you've got this little guy here uh, near the dip switch settings go from him you can go underneath underneath along and to the point where it says 10k just under the 10k point there which I'm hoping that you can see that. So that's the first one that you do to repair. Probably 75 to 80% of boards will need that. Um, if, if a battery has pussed out a lot, like this one has, you will need to do that. That's that It's always the track that gets eaten first. The next one is to do with the reset switch here. Um, these two lines must be shorted, but as you can see from the damage, they've been eaten off. So that's this little guy here. Hopefully you can see. I'll see if I can get a nice picture of it. Okay, so you've got this track here where the screwdriver is showing. So you short from there all the way to that pin there. So you've got pin one, two, three, four. So you go down to the fourth pin. Um, so that's the second mod. Um, that's to repair the damage from where this switch is here. And, and where all the tracks have been eaten away. So you can remove the switch because it's usually covered in corrosion. Uh, also, the reset switch usually is, is covered as well. This one I've actually taken out and replaced. Um, so usually you do that well. So that's the, that's the second one that needs to be done. Um, it's quite easy because it's on the top here. Uh, you'll notice I've used little dobs of hot glue. That's just to hold the wires on. 
Now the wires I use, I use uh, enamel wire. Um, it's the same wire that you use in transformers. Uh, the reason I use it over canar wire or any of those types is because the actual wire itself, um, this is a little spool. I've had this spool for, crikey, I don't know, a long, long time, like probably 10, 15 years, and it's still got crap loads of wire on it. So if you can see this stuff, it is, it's quite fine, uh, and it's not going to focus on it because it is quite fine. Yeah, not surprised there. Uh, it's just called enamel wire. You can get it in all different sizes. There you go. There's a, oh, there you go. Now it's lost focus again. Um, basically, what you do is you heat up the end, and what it does is it melts the, um, enamel wire um, which uh, it's got copper wire underneath so then you can solder on it so it's really easy you can just cut a piece and then just tin both ends um, and then just solder it on it's really good there's no no stripping no um, bending or anything it, it's just you burn a little bit of the enamel off at each end and then you can put it down it works really really well this one's fairly fine um, there are a lot thicker if, you, if you're not as, as, as confident on wire that's that thin. So that's the enamel wire, that's the wire I use. That's what you'll see on all of my repairs. Um, now, the next one, this one's a little bit trickier. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Okay, now, from my other videos, you'll know that the caps leak. This is the cap that's right near the processor. Now, let's see if I can get a shot of it. You'll see all these tracks around here get eaten. Uh, it's really terrible. It just destroys the board. Now, if you can just see... I don't know if it's going to be... Able to, uh, there's a track just here. You might be able to just see it. It's the first track that goes across um, underneath that vire, uh, which is, is for the cap, um, gets eaten straight off. So to fix that, you go from here over on this guy here. So that's three up. One, two, three. Go from him all the way across over to here to just in this guy here so that's one two um, on that side and that'll fix up that track um, that's really common to do this one on older boards because the caps do leak um, this is a revision three remember so it is quite old um, the cap had leaked everywhere I mean you can see you can see in there with all the tracks that I've had to um, uh, repair and, re and, and replace so that's the main three mods that you have to do to, to get a board running. This board does run, um, but I haven't actually, I don't use this board um, at all. It's, it's just a test board, um, et cetera, et cetera. I don't really use it. Um, so yeah, so that's a Rev3. Now I'll just run through the same mods, but on a different board, um, just so you can see there are different spots where you can actually attach the wires. Um, they don't have to be exactly what I've got here, um, but this is the easiest way to do it. So I'll just put that guy away. So that's a Rev3. Now, I've got this guy here. Now, one thing that you've probably noticed, if you noticed in my previous videos, I said about the location of this cap here. I said that it needs to be in the other spot in here, which is just above the power fingers um, on the JAMA connector, and they're the ones to go for. If you've noticed, all the ones in these videos are all pre-version 9, so the cap will be in the wrong spot. So these are all the ones that are going to have battery damage. So I'll just pop this guy out, um, which is going to be a pain because he's still screwed in. So I'll just get rid of these feet. So just give me a quick second. Just get rid of the feet. Now, if you're not good at doing soldering on fine traces, uh, tracks, etc., um, please find a friend who can, uh, or somebody else that you know um, is good with soldering. I wouldn't recommend this to a beginner, um, just because the tracks are quite fine and you have to do soldering that's quite fine. Um, the way I clean up the tracks, I use a scalpel with a 10A blade to, to scratch most of the corrosion off. Uh, and then I go over it with what's called a fiber brush um, or an abrasive brush. Um, they've got different names. Um, it's basically just a, I'll show you one. Uh, I'll just pop this guy out. All right, so he's popped out. Um, fiber brush these little guys. Now there are quite a few different versions. Um, basically, these are the fibers that you put in them. This is the one I use the most of. It's um, it's like fiberglass, 
Um, so it's quite abrasive, but it doesn't. It's not as abrasive as sandpaper. Um, so basically, what you do is you have it in a little pencil, and you just turn the end of the pencil, and the fiber comes out the end, and you just scratch on the on the board like that, and that will take all the corrosion off and fix up um, tracks so that you can. Uh, cover them and solder again and make them all nice. So a fibre brush is really really handy for this sort of stuff. Um, it's actually very very handy for all types of um, board uh, repair. So there's that one. You can get other types like this one here. Um, this is not the one I would use on a PCB. This one's got um, a metal bristles of brass. Um, so it's, it's good for cl cleaning heavy duty stuff but I wouldn't do a PCB uh, with it. But that's just to show you there are different types. Um, so that's a yellow one. Um, if, you, if you search for fiber brush, you should get it. Um, there's, there's all different types of ones. If you're going to buy one, make sure you get quite a few refills because um, these refills are not, um, they're usually different uh, between fiber brushes. So if you're going to get some, get a few. These work really, really well. Um, you'll be glad if you bought it. Um, the brushes, I think, are around 20 US. Um, and then the the, repla the refills are, I think they're like 10 or 15. It's not expensive, um, and, and they're really, really handy. Any battery damage, track damage, uh, it doesn't even have to be track damage. Um, you may just have a little bit of um, oxidizing. You can clean that off, and you know everybody's happy. Um, so that works really well. So again, guys, this is a Rev 5. Um, as you can see, the cap's in the wrong place. So I don't, these are the ones that I don't recommend. As you can see in here, um, there's been major battery damage. Um, on most of these boards, I actually removed, this is the third and fourth player connector. So most people will never use it, but it does get covered in corrosion. And you'll see that most of these boards do not have that connector anymore because I've taken it off because it is covered in corrosion. So I don't want to have anything that's got corrosion on it um, that will help to spread more corrosion. Once you remove the battery, remove that connector, there's not anything else that's passing out everywhere. Um, so you can just clean it up and that's it. Um, if you're going to get really, really into it, um, you can get what's called clear protective lacquer, CPL, and you can actually spray it and it'll, it'll um, put down a clear coating that you can solder through, um, but it won't oxidize and it won't allow the um, any of the corrosion to eat it. But I just clean it off. Once the battery's not there, there's nothing producing the pus, so um, it's not going to hurt anything. So just, yeah, get rid of the battery, get rid of that connector. Um, some connectors are okay, um, but I remove them if they've if they've got too much corrosion on them. Now this board has the 10K mod, as I nicknamed it, as I was telling you before. Now you can see over here, you can see where the the 10K mark is there, and it goes across over to the other side, uh, right into the via there, just near the dip switch. So that's the same as the last one. So that's the first mod that you have to do. If you can see, let's see if I can get a good shot. Where's this little, where's my little screwdriver? You can hardly even see it. The track's just along there. That's the one that gets eaten away. You can see in the later boards, it's tiny. It's really, really thin. You can see here where it's all been eaten off. Um, but that's the, that's the first one that you fix. The second one here, which goes from this track here to one, two, three, four, that's for the switch. Because as you can see, the switch is missing because it was all covered in corrosion and had been eaten away as well. That's the second mod that you have to do. Um, so these two mods were in the, the previous um, PGM motherboard that I that I showed. Um, this guy, this cap was okay. It wasn't passed out very much. It didn't leak much. So it's been replaced um, with a new one, and that's what the green is on top. Whenever I do caps, when I replace one, I always color it in. Um, as you can see with the ones over here, that way I know it's done. Uh, and, and the guy up here, um, that way it's done. I don't have to think about it, etc., uh, etc., so yeah, so it hadn't passed out too much, so I don't need to, to fix the tracks underneath it, so he's all good. So it's just those two mods, guys, um, to do a repair to get this guy running again. And that's generally how it is. It's generally just those two. So I'll just put this guy back in his case. So that was a Rev 5, so that's a Rev 5. Put him back in there. There we go, click him back in. Grab his anti-static bag. Put him back in. Place it there. Now, this will be my last one for this video because the mods are exactly the same between the units. Um, I don't want to be boring you guys with every single revision and every single different mod. This, I 
think is a Rev 5. If memory serves. Yeah, this is a Rev 5. Um, this is another thing um, that you, you might find uh, in some of my videos. You'll notice here the volume knob is not there. Somebody's replaced it with just a normal um, three-legged three, three -legged pot. Um, I uh, One of the guys online has found some in Alibamba or AliExpress. I can't remember which website it is. But I've grabbed some and I'm, I've ordered 200 of them. So if you need a wheel, because uh, this is the wheel type volume adjustment, um, just hit me up and, and I can show you the link. Um, they're like 11 US for 100 of them. Um, if you're in Australia and you wanted some, I wouldn't mind, you know, sending you a couple, um, you know, if you pay for the postage, because they're just, they're only a couple of cents each, um, so that's all cool, but just something to note, um, that, that's, that's not me, I haven't modified it like that, because people normally cut into the case, and I really don't like that, it's not the way it's meant to be, um, so yeah, so that can be fixed, um, big thanks to the guy who found that, that I, um, on the arcade forum, I think it was, Arcade Projects Forum, a uh, guy found it, I think. Um, the name escapes me, but yeah, he did some really good work there. I'd been trying to find one for a very long time. Now, this guy here, which you can see, uh, more enamel wire. This is the 10K mod, but I've done it on the top, not to the bottom, um, which is just in there. There's the 10K mod. So you can still do it from there to around to here, and, and, that's, and that's all fine. I've just done it on top. Um, just to just to make my life a little bit easier it's probably more difficult doing it on the top especially with this point just here um so if you want to go up and around that's that's all cool now this guy wasn't too bad um the battery damage if you can see you can see most of it i've cleaned up so it's not too bad i've just put a little jumper in there and then i've soldered across the jumper because that's where the switch normally is so i didn't have to redo this this track here or do the little one where you go from here into into this guy here because the the traces weren't too bad. You can see here where I've cleaned them off uh, and I've recoated them in solder to make them all nice again. Um, so yeah, so this guy wasn't too bad for a revision five. Um, it was quite surprising because it still had the battery when I got it, um, but amazingly it hadn't been leaking out um, too far. Um, so that was really good. So that's basically it guys, that was all the ones I really wanted to cover, um, just those mods. Um, if anybody gets stuck and they want more video on mods or whatnot, please let me know. Um, but I just wanted to, to show you guys what you have to do. Um, and yeah, and this board would run. So if you have a board before uh, Rev 9 and you're having trouble with it, it's 99% of the time going to be the battery. And that's the way to fix it. Um, there are a few web pages online about how to fix them. Um, there's not a lot. Um, but there is some. I'm definitely not the first person to figure this out. Uh, probably many years ago when I repaired my first board, um, which is in a machine here at home. Um, that's why I'm not showing it to you because it's, um, it's in a machine. Um, I actually ended up having to, it had eaten into these pins here and right in here. I don't know if I can get a good shot. Um, yeah, there we go. These pins in here in the bottom of the connectors had all been eaten away. So there was no connection between the main board and the, the cartridge slot because they'd been eaten. And I had to undo them all and then I had to wire them manually from these points here all the way across into this, this strip here. Um, that was the first one that I had to do. Plus I had to do all these other, the other mods that, I was, um, that I've told you about uh, in the video. I had to do them as well, um, but I had to do that. So that's another thing to look for if you've got an early revision board, uh, especially if it's still got the battery attached and, and, and passing out everywhere. So that's it guys, that's all I really wanted to show for today. Um, if you have any more requests, uh, questions or anything, please let me know. Thanks.